So this is gonna be a follow-up video that I did about two months ago and we set up this antenna and it's eight DBI. We're gonna be switching it out with a six DBI antenna and we got a new lightning arrestor. So we're definitely gonna switch that out. We do have the LMR 400 cable. We're gonna leave that in there and then uh, we're gonna go over some of the stuff that I could uh, do better or that I could fix from last time. So let's get it. Okay, you guys, so we just took the mount down right here. You guys can see it. And then so this is the old uh, antenna. That's the 8 dBi and we're switching it for the 6 dBi antenna. There is a 5.8 dBi, but we went with the 6 uh, dBi. We want to see how, how the 6 goes. And then uh, if you guys remember from the last video, this is what it looks like right here. We bought this from Home Depot, but this antenna luckily came with its own mount. So I'm going to show you guys how to get all that set up. But this is going to go around the, the actual uh, pole. And then uh, we got a new lightning arrestor. I want to show you guys that. So one of the things I'm going to fix from last time is uh, one of the subscribers actually let me know. So you guys see that all the way at the bottom of the antennas right here. So what you want to do is you want to clear the the antenna all the way above here so it's just by a little bit but you guys anything helps you know if you're trying to earn the most hnt we can so we are going to try to lift it as as far as we can but that's one of the mess ups we had and then also the, another mess up is the you guys already know the lightning arrestor we bought one that wasn't uh, legit but we have a new one that's legit from amazon so we're going to go ahead and put that in and you guys i just want to let you know i uh, have a link in the description box it's a one link it has all the items that we're going to be using in this video and other videos to set up these miners okay i did want to show you guys the lightning arrestor this is it right here got it on amazon i want to show you guys like this is the legit one right here you guys can see it's it come in this bag this bag a package on it and this is it right here. Let me pull it out so you guys can see. Now this is a legit one right here because what we're going to do is we're going to put the grounding wire in here and then we're going to clamp this red, uh, this little red tube right here. We're going to clamp it on to the actual grounding wire and it's going to stay on there. The last one we did was kind of like finicky. So that's why we bought this one. And I do want to show you guys the different connections here. Okay. So right here, this is an end type male. Okay. And you guys can see that it actually screws and there is a point on the inside. That's why it's the male. You got to like pay attention to these different connections because it's hard to try to get everything aligned. But if you guys are paying attention to what you're ordering, you're going to get it. Okay. So this is an N type female. You guys could see it kind of looks like a male from the inside, but it, there's a hole on it, right? Where the male, it's like a pointy tip. And then the female, you could actually see that there's a hole on the inside. And then, so this is N type female. This is N type male. Okay. So this is the six DBI antenna that we bought. Okay. So this is the female. Let me show you guys. This is the female, right? And you guys could see it has that point, but it's, it's empty in the middle. Okay. So we're going to take our male and our female, and we're going to connect these two right here. Okay. And then, so I also got this cable right here. It's an LMR 400. I got this off of Amazon, you guys. Okay. So on this side, we do have the female, right? And then this is the male, end type male. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw this in like so. I'm going to show you guys, but I'm kind of like just pre-warning you, right? So we're going to screw that in here. And on the opposite side, this one goes directly into the miner. It doesn't matter if you guys have a rack miner, if you guys have a bobcat miner and, uh, there's a bunch of other ones I can't think right now and the camera's on me, but uh, there's a bunch of them. And you guys could see, this is the female, it's called a RPSMA. The RP stands for reverse polarity. And what it is, the, the R is reverse. So if it's a, it's a male part, but the RP makes it reverse. So it's actually female. It's very confusing, but um, I'm gonna put all the links uh, in the description box so you guys could kind of like see which ones I ordered. But uh, that is the cables, and I just kind of wanted to show you guys the cables before we put it all together because it is very confusing. And then also, this is the mount that came with the antenna, so we're going to be able to mount it up and put it all the way at the top of the pole so we get more gain. I forgot to mention the, so this is a 30 foot cable right here. You guys could get different cables. The shorter the cable, the less DBI loss you're gonna have. So the longer you go, you know, you might uh, lose out on some earnings, but if you're putting your antenna and your whole setup on the roof, you're gonna get way more earnings than you would if it's at the window. So depending on if you guys wanna go with a long cord or if you guys wanna go with the outdoor encasing setup, 
um, it's up to you. You could get like a three foot cable and then do like an outdoor setup, but it's, it's really up to you guys, whatever you want to do. But I'm cool with having a 30 footer that way. Um, it, it might lose a little bit of DBI, but we're still going to get the most earnings since we have the antenna on the roof. If you guys are interested in me doing a outdoor casing video, go ahead and let me know in the comment box below. I could set this up, but uh, I do prefer a longer cable. That way you could actually keep an eye on your bobcat or rack or whatever minor you have. You could kind of keep an eye on it versus having it in the case. But if you guys want that video, I will make it for you guys. Just let me know in the comment box below. So we have everything out. We're, we're just ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start connecting this. It's not a, you know, nothing crazy, but um, people in the comments uh, light me up because they want to see like step-by-step -step process. So I want to show, I want to show the step-by-step -step process. Okay. Okay. So that is nice and tight now right here. And like I said, it's, it's on the, it's on the roof. So it's not like I could just pull it down and pull it up. I usually need help to get this going. So I want to make sure it's as tight as possible. So it's not getting loose with the wind and all the movement and everything. And then I do have a, um, something else I'm going to put on top of here that I didn't do previously. So we're just, we're kind of like learning, just like you guys are learning. We're also learning when we do these setups and then people in the comment, you know, helping me out. A lot of people are hating on me, but there are some helpful uh, tips out there. So we are trying to learn as well. You guys don't, you know, I'm trying to help you guys out. You guys help me out as well. So this is a better look at the antenna. I do want to focus right here where it says 6 DBI. So you guys can see what we're working with. And like I said, this is the female connector. There's some antennas that are male, some are female. Okay, so we just go ahead and pull that bag out. And then we're just going to connect it just like so. Okay, so we want to make sure it's the tightest we could get it. Okay, so now that's pretty much set up. All we're missing is putting the grounding wire in here, and then we're going to clamp it down, and it's going to be on there nice and tight. We do have the grounding wire right here. It is 12 AWG, so it's a 12 gauge, right? And then we're going to be using this. Uh, some people in the comments said you need 10 gauge, but you guys do your research and see what you need. This is not any type of financial advice, any type of uh, electrician advice, you guys do your own thing, you know, uh, seek with a professional. But what I'm doing is I'm using a 12 AWG, right? This is the cable. And then uh, I went ahead and I just stripped a little piece and came off. And then this is gonna go right in here. Let me see if I could show you guys before I actually put it in there so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But all the way in, you can see where the grounding wire goes right in there. And then we're gonna clamp it and then that's going to be a more secure than our last video that we had that we kind of jerry-rigged it but uh so this one's going to be a lot better so i do want to point out that the inside of this red it has the metal right so as long as we're putting this in we're just going to push it all the way through and when we clamp this that metal piece it's touching the screw and it's going all the way in so the lightning arrestor it's going to do its job right there so you know if you guys want to light me up in the comments go ahead seek with a professional electrician but this is what we're doing right here and this is uh the right way according to me and uh one thing i want to talk about the lightning arrestor is like if lightning straight up hits it um it's probably gonna like fry your miner okay so what it helps is if lightning does hit it, the electricity is supposed to run through the ground wire, right? And it's supposed to give all the electricity to the actual ground, like the dirt. And it's not supposed to, you know, catch your roof on fire. So that's the whole point of having this lightning arrestor. It is for safety. Some people told me that they don't use this and they earn more when they actually take it off. But it's a, it's a safety concern and it's up to you guys what you guys want to do. What we're going to do is we're going to clamp it with our wires here. We're just going to squeeze it and it should fit right on it like that. Okay, you guys, so we just tightened it. You guys could see that I'm, I'm tugging on it, but uh, I do want to secure it. And, you know, it's going to look a little finicky, but we are going to put some zip ties on it just to make sure everything's nice and tight right here. But it's just, it's very tough to put these grounding wires on these arresters. But as long as the metal's touching metal, we should be good to go. And uh, that's what we're doing here. Okay, that is the first zip tie. We're trying to put everything in place, you guys. It's going to be windy, so we're going to put this. I have some uh, some tape that I bought that I want to show you guys also, and we're going to tape it up once everything's all said and done. But I'm going to just put maybe a couple more zip ties, and we should be good. Okay, so we got 
three zip ties right here and then uh, we're gonna put the tape on there I'm gonna show you guys which tape I bought but uh, that's pretty secure and we just wrapped it around that way it's gonna be going all the way down this cord right here because this is downwards the antenna is upwards as you guys could see this is the repair tape that I got from Amazon right here you guys you can see it's self bonding silicone wrap and then is one inch in uh, width and it's 10 feet long so this is going to be good enough to go for a couple of different miners but uh, i'm going to show you guys how to use it in a second but uh what you want to do is it's air and water tight seal so if it rains in your area it, what this does it's going to cover all this all these uh all this we have right here all these connections that way it's a nice tight seal and it's going to be weatherproof so let's go ahead and open up You guys could see how well that looks. It just looks waterproof. It looks nice and tight. You guys, this is weatherproof. So I recommend that you do something like this because I regret it just uh, last time. All we did is just set it up without having anything in place right here. So definitely recommend you guys get this or electrical tape, but this works a little bit better. As you guys could see, like no water is going to be getting in there at all. Plumbers also use this on pipes. So definitely strong and definitely recommend it. Now it's time to put on the mount. What I did is I just went ahead and slid it all the way down. And like I was telling you guys earlier, we want to get this all the way low because we want this to clear the top of the actual mount pole. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about once we actually put it up. But the lower this is, this bracket is, um, the lower it's going to be on the pole. And then that means it's going to clear um, all the way. It's going to clear right here at the bottom of the antenna. And it might be confusing, but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in a second. So the first part is uh, screwing these four screws in. Now we have to mount directly onto our uh, antenna pole right here. And this is what I was talking about, you guys. You want to make sure this part clears so it's a 360. The last time we had it kind of like this, so it blocked the lower part. And I mean, it's probably not the biggest deal, but if you guys want to maximize your earnings for HNT, this is going to be right here. So now we want to go ahead. We're going to put it this one on, and then we're going to put the second one on, and then we're going to screw it in, and that should keep it nice and tight. And then we're going to go ahead and mount it onto the roof. You guys can see I put the washer here and all we have to do is put this nut all the way down and then we have to repeat on the other side right here and then we can mount it. You guys, this is what the back side looks like. All we did is uh, we screwed uh, all these four nuts right here and then we tighten them down. So you guys, I was just kind of like looking at it and this is nice, it's tight, it's not going anywhere and it's nice and straight. So all we have to do now is go ahead and mount this and then um, we're gonna show you guys what the what the bobcat looks like and everything. But uh, let's go ahead and get this mounted first. All right, I want you guys to look up. You guys could see it is straight now. It's more, much more secure than the other one. And then since we have all that that uh, that bonding tape on there, uh, weatherproof. We did throw two zip ties over here. Uh, one thing one of my subscribers told me was to have washers in here and that would keep it a little extra tight. I forgot the washers, but I'm telling you guys so you guys could uh, make these corrections when you guys are trying to, uh, you know, go ahead and install your guys' miner. So now what we need to do, a little bit of housekeeping again. So we do have all the all these holders right here for the cords. So we're just going to throw them through there. But I did want to say like the less exposure these cords have to the elements like the sun and the rain and all that stuff the better so a better bet would to be like to put the cord and run it all the way inside so the sun's not beating on it so the rain's not getting on it um we we only have these clips right now to work with so we're just going to go ahead and do the same setup as last time which is running it through you guys could see it right here i'm going to show you guys once it's done but uh yeah you always want to hide this from the elements <laughs> All right, so we were able to successfully use the clips that we already had on here. So you guys can see we ran it down. And what I was talking about is having the cords on the inside. But this is what we got to work with. So we're going to run it all the way down. We have to still ground the grounding wire. And then I'm going to show you guys to do a drip loop. We didn't do a drip loop last time. So we're going to do it this time.
So you guys, there's three ways to ground this wire. We're gonna use, I guess this the number one way is if you have the circuit breaker, we're luckily on the same side as the circuit breaker. And we're actually just gonna put it right through here and we're gonna tighten it up, right? So this is, I, I, I think we got lucky here having the circuit breaker over here, right? But there's two other ways. One way is I'm gonna show you guys footage of my setup right now. We're definitely gonna do my whole setup in the future. But this is what it looks like. I bought this off of Amazon and you screw it onto a copper pipe. Then you put the grounding wire on there. That's the second way of doing it because the copper pipe eventually goes into the ground and which grounds it. The third way is if you guys get a lightning rod, here's a picture of a lightning rod. Uh, this is a four foot one. You have to drive it all the way down into the dirt and then you're gonna attach the grounding wire to the grounding rod. So that's three ways that I know of doing it. If you guys know of another way, feel free to let me know in the comments. This hole right here leads into the garage and inside the garage is where we have our Bobcat Miner, right? So this is the connection that goes straight into the Bobcat Miner. What I was gonna tell you guys right here, we wanna do a drip loop. That way if it's raining, the rain is gonna just drip down on the loop and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. But uh, what it is, is um, that way the rain is not going directly inside the house. This is the garage, it's not a big deal. The garage has concrete floor, so we're not gonna be messing it up or anything, but some people have it going into their living room or whatever, so you do wanna keep the, the wetness out. And one more thing is um, this hole right here, we definitely wanna cover it up. Um, it's not my house, so I can't do what I want with it, but if it was my house, I would cover this hole up. That way rodents or anything don't get in there. Okay, so this is the drip loop that I'm talking about. We're just gonna use a simple zip tie to have it do the loop-de-loop -loop right here. Tighten it up like so. And then the rest of the cord, right? It's where the miner's at. We're just gonna go ahead and feed it all the way through. Okay. And, ooh, nice. We're gonna fit that right in there. Okay, let me push this in a little bit more. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about, you guys. So the water, technically, is supposed to run down here and then it's supposed to drip down here at the lowest point, okay? If we were feeding it in, water could technically just run and then go straight through. So this is just one little uh, technique that you guys could use to help like, you know, prevent any damage inside your house. It's not a big deal, but I did wanna show you guys that this is uh, the way to go. You guys, we we're now inside the garage and you guys can see that's the hole that was on the outside. So we fed in the LMR 400 cord and you guys can see that we have a little bit of slack. We wanted to order a little bit more, but if you guys wanna earn more, you wanna measure it and kind of get exact, but it's always good to have like a foot or two, maybe even three feet of slack, just in case you miscalculate, okay? So this is the RP, right? That's the reverse uh, male pretty much. And that screws right into the Bobcat Miner. Let me show you guys right here. It's kind of tough, but uh, try to screw it in here for you guys could see. And one thing I did last time that was a big deal was I powered on the miner without having the, the antenna like hooked up. So everybody was blowing me up in the comments. So what you want to do is you want to hook up the antenna first, then you want to turn it on. Because if you turn it on without hooking up the, the antenna, uh, the signal is going to get lost. It's going to have nowhere to go. And uh, it's not going to spontaneously combust, but it could mess up your miner. So you definitely want to make sure it's nice and connected before you go ahead and turn it on. So it's cool that the Bobcat miner comes with this mount because the rack miner did not come with the mount. So all we have to do is uh, I screwed this in with two screws. And then this, these four prongs go right here in these four areas, just like so. And then you slide it down. And then we want to double check and make sure it didn't unscrew when we turned it around the 180. Okay, so that is good to go. Now we can have the plug. You guys don't light me up in the comments this time. We did everything right. We hooked it up and now we could power on. Okay, we have an extension cord and it goes into a surge protector. You want to make sure you have the surge protector that way just in case uh, something happens. Like just so you don't want to fry your miner. So definitely have a surge protector. You guys want to make sure that your bobcat, if you do have a bobcat, you want to make sure it's green because it started off as yellow and it kind of does its own little reboot. But when it's green, that means it's good to go. So hopefully we're going to start earning some HNT, but uh, it might have to sink back into the system, uh, unfortunately. But, you know, we have a different DBI antenna and we're hopefully going to be gaining more HNT this way. If you guys want to check out the earnings video, I'll leave it linked below. So check that out. 
And uh, I, if I left anything out or if you guys uh, didn't see a part, that's because I made a part one to this video. So you could also check that out in the description box. It's more of a step by step. This one was kind of like me fixing stuff that uh, went wrong or stuff that I could have done better in the first time around. Do not forget to subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And I'll check you guys out in the next video.